My name is Dr. Switzer, and today we will be learning about analyzing the interaction between individuals, events, and ideas of a text. Let's begin by analyzing a picture. It says, consider the events in the cartoon below. What effect does Og's complaint have on his wife, Er? What is her response? How do these factors result in a new invention? Let's look at our dialogue boxes. Og wish Og had somewhere comfy to sit. Erg gets an idea. And in the next frame, Og has a chair. So let's look at the chart below to see how the effect, different factors in the cartoon are related. So we have the idea, they need a comfy place to sit. The individual is Erg, she's the inventor. What's going to be the response? So the response is, Og's comments caused Erg to become inspired to invent the chair. Now we're going to look at text provided and complete the chart below. Do horses fly? Intelligent, well-educated people were still asking this question at the end of the 19th century. Although the age of believing in winged horses had long since passed, people still wondered if a horse ever lifted all four hooves off the ground at the same time. If Sun could prove that a horse's hooves left the ground, then the answer would indicate that, yes, in a sense, horses do fly. Edward Mybridge, photographer and adventurer, put an end to years of speculation. Through the use of new technology, photography, he laid the question to rest at last. In 1872, Mybridge was working as a photographer in San Francisco when Leland Stanford, former California governor, hired Mybridge to photograph his racehorse. Stanford wanted to know if all four hooves of a trotting horse actually left the ground, even for an instant. Mybridge rapidly hatched a plan. Unfortunately, his early efforts were unsuccessful. So in our chart, the idea is blank. Our individual is Edward Mybridge and the response caused Mybridge to photograph Stanford's horse. So why did Mybridge photograph Stanford's horse? And the whole idea to begin with, can horses fly was the idea. So that was a whole basis of these interactions that took place. Now we're going to read an article called Hey Saw Lady by Julie A. Evans. Natalia Paruz came to the United States from Israel in 1989. She was 14, already a talented dancer, and she'd been accepted as a student at the prestigious Alvin Ailey School in New York City. Two years into her training, tragedy struck. Natalia was hit by a taxi cab as she crossed a city street. The cab came around the corner and didn't stop. It hit me at full speed, she recalled. Natalia would suffer permanent injury to her upper spine. Physical therapy, massage, and acupuncture helped ease the pain, but her dance career was over before it had begun. I feel fortunate because I can walk, says Natalia but I can't turn my head all the way to the left and right, and I can't bend backwards, and I can't dance. To cheer up their grieving daughter, Natalia's parents took her to Austria for a tour of the countryside where her favorite childhood movie, The Sound of Music, was filmed. One night, the family attended a concert featuring a musician playing, of all things, a carpenter's handsaw. Natalia was entranced. The saw moved as if it was dancing. It was the first time since the accident that I felt excited about something, she said. After the show, Natalia went backstage and asked the man if he could teach her how to play the saw. He said no. He told me, go home, pick up any saw for carpentry, and figure it out. When Natalia returned to, the United, to New York, she borrowed a rusty saw from a friend. 
she was able to make it sing just a little, creating six distinct notes. Encouraged, she went to the hardware store and tested a few saws until she found one that played a full octave and a half. Just like Maria in The Sound of Music, Natalia had found her calling. Within a few years, she excelled at this instrument, which produces a sound eerily like that of a soprano opera singer. It's amazing that a piece of metal can sound so human, she says. The accident changed my life for the better. When God closed the door on dance, he opened a window into a whole new musical world for me, she says, alluding to well-known words spoken by Maria in the popular film. At first, playing the saw was just a hobby for Natalia. She would play the saw while on break from her job selling souvenirs in Broadway theaters. She practiced at home, but always worried that neighbors would complain about the peculiar sounds coming from her apartment. Ironically, it was one of these very same neighbors who referred Natalia for her first public appearance, playing for senior citizens at a local Salvation Army Center. I was still new to the saw, and I really didn't know if I was good enough, said Natalia. But her performance was a hit, and the Salvation Army Center recommended her to another center which in turn led to more referrals. Soon, Natalia was fielding invitations from all over the city. Since those early days, Natalia has played the saw with some of the world's greatest musicians, including the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra. She'd been invited to play at Madison Square Garden, Carnegie Hall, and other New York institutions. Natalia also works in the studio recording music for television commercials, singer-songwriters, and movie soundtracks. She appeared as a saw player in the 2002 movie Dummy, starring Adrian Brody. Garrison Keillor of the Prairie Home Companion radio show has named Natalia the show's official saw player. But her favorite venue is the cavernous New York City subway system, where she performs regularly. It's such an honor to fill the artery of this great city with my sound and provide the soundtrack to people's lives, says Natalia. Which phrase from paragraph three of this article best shows why Natalia's parents took her on the trip? A, to cheer up their grieving daughter. B, for a tour of the countryside. C, her favorite childhood movie was filmed. Or D, the family attended a concert. If you selected A to cheer up their grieving daughter, you are correct. She was upset, she could no longer dance, so they decided to take her to Austria where her favorite movie was filmed and took place. How did the trip to Austria affect Natalia's mood? A, she felt peaceful. B, she felt proud. D, she felt relieved, or D, she felt renewed. If you selected D, you are correct. She felt renewed, rejuvenated. She was excited that she discovered the saw and that it could make music. This concludes our lesson today.